This is a grind. The DMZ Mastery Camo Serpentine. By all meaning of the term mastery, you have to know this game mode inside and out to unlock this camo. And it gets straight up confusing at times. There's going to be timestamps on screen and in the description, so you can skip through any portion of the guide that you need. It's a complex camo grind, and the first thing that you should know is only one person can unlock the camo at a time. And you might think to yourself, well, that makes sense, I could only unlock Orion by myself, but it's a little bit different than that. The person that barters for the camo at the end of the game is the one that unlocks it. The other people in your party do not get it. Here is how you unlock the Mastery Camo Serpentine. You have to either unlock or barter all of these items just to get the camo. You will have to play every map in DMZ and complete a lot of challenges just to be able to barter for some items. There is a possibility that you may come across another team doing the camo grind themselves. If you end up killing them and looting them, maybe they might have a few items you need further along down the line and can skip a couple steps, but don't rely on this being a viable strategy. The odds of you coming across another team doing this camo challenge is very, very, very small. You may find some items around DMZ that you will need later on in the camo grind. If you are lucky enough to come across some of these items, you can stow them and save them for later, or have another friend carry them for you. I recommend do planning to do all of the bartering and looting in order from step one all the way to unlocking the camo. That way you're not getting too ahead of yourself and leaving something behind or completely forgetting about a step that you need to complete. Multiple people can barter for the camo at the same time, as long as each player has all the required items. At any point, if you lose any of your items accidentally by dropping them or end up dying and get your items stolen, you may have to restart all over again from the very beginning. The best way to get this camo grind done? Do it with a couple friends. Sure, you might have to do it once or twice to get everyone the camo, but multiple people can help out and work on multiple steps at the same time. An item that you absolutely need that is non-negotiable is a secure bag. This will allow you to bring items from map to map. If you don't have a secure bag and you're doing the camo grind and decide to exfil with some items that you just unlocked and grinded for, you will lose them. The secure bag is a small grind in itself. You have to kill the scavenger 10 times just to unlock the barter recipe to craft the item in the first place. You can very, very rarely find it in loot stashes across any map in the game. And of course, you can come across an enemy player who has the secure backpack on their back. You can kill them and take it. Or if you have a friend who plays DMZ a lot and they already have the secure bag barter recipe, you can get them to craft the bag for you. It, all it requires is a single gold skull, two gas cans, and two drills. The gold skull spawns when you kill the scavenger. The two gas cans can be found at any gas station across most maps. And then the two electric drills have the highest spawn frequency on Almazra. If you go to the construction site just south of Almazra City, open up the blue tool chests, and with the high frequency that they spawn there, you can find tons of them. Once you have all five items, go to any buy station across the map and barter for your secure bag. Make sure when you're exfilling that your secure bag is always on your back. There has been a few times that I've been doing the camel grind and a friend has forgotten to switch over their secure bag onto their back, which means they're exfilling and losing some items. Within your secure bag, always carry a scavenger backpack, which you get from killing the scavenger or a large backpack. Just make sure that you switch over to your secure before you leave the game. This will allow you to switch over to that large or secure backpack while in your DMZ match to carry more items to make the grind just a little bit easier for you. And trust me, if you ever make the secure bag mistake of X filling without it equipped, you will only make that mistake once, hopefully. If at any point you get a second secure bag, whether you craft it or loot it, X fill with that extra secure backpack stowed within your main secure backpack. Now, with your second secure backpack, select a different operator to spawn in with. The second you spawn in, that secure backpack will already be in your second character's inventory. All you have to do is equip your secure backpack and exfil, and now you have two operators with secure bags. So worst case scenario, if you ever have to restart or use a second character with a secure backpack, you have some backup. Another item you absolutely need to unlock the barter recipe for is the skeleton key, because not only do you need it to barter later in the game to get the camo itself, but having multiple skeleton keys can make the grind way easier for you. The skeleton keys unlock any locked building or loot stash, which makes it extremely useful so you don't have to find specific keys throughout the game. 
to unlock some restricted areas. In order to unlock the bartering recipe, you have to go to Building 21, which is only available on weekends, and you have to have a Building 21 key card. Once you're in the map of Building 21, you just have to kill Velikin, and boom, you have the barter recipe unlocked. The easiest way to barter for it is on Vondel, where you need three self revives and three three plate armors and one gold bar. If you have any extra GPUs from Ashika, when you get to that step later on, you can craft skeleton keys on Almazra for one GPU and two gold bars. And then on Ashika, you can trade one video cassette recorder, two gold bars, one vintage wine, and one encrypted hard drive. You should be trying to craft skeleton keys as much as possible throughout the grind. As stated earlier, they will open any locked stash or door for you, and you actually need them to barter for the camo. The skeleton keys, once you craft them, will be the only item that you will be able to exfil and keep without a secure bag. Before you start any of the grind, you should at least get the skeleton key barter recipe. That way, when you're doing this step of getting a Damascus dog tag, you can craft as many skeleton keys as possible. The Damascus dog tag is another grind. You have to successfully exfil 10 times in a row without dying in DMZ while completing at least one contract per match. The best contracts to do are prisoner rescues because once you rescue the prisoner, you can exfil right then and there. And if you want something a little bit easier, if there's no prisoner rescues around, you can do radiation contracts. On Ashika and Vondel, these contracts can be completed the fastest, but you're at higher risk of dying because there's more bots and more enemy players in a more condensed area. Almazra is the safest strategy to get these 10 exfils in a row. The map is a little bit slower, but it's safer. During your grind to get your Damascus dog tag, you should be getting as many skeleton keys made as possible, and you should get your secure bag. And now, once you have your secure bag, hopefully a few skeleton keys saved up, and your Damascus dog tag, you can finally start doing the camel grind. There's a few optional items that you should be looting or bartering for while doing your Damascus dog tag grind. These will increase your chances of survival and completing the camel grind. These items are a large or scavenger backpack, which you will use alongside your secure backpack to increase your inventory, self revives, scuba masks, and any kill streak you want. I recommend grabbing an advanced UAV from killing a scavenger or any other boss just so if things get a little bit hectic, you have extra intel on your escape plan. That was a lot to take in before even starting the camo grind, but now that we have our Damascus dog tag and our secure bag, hopefully a few skeleton keys saved up in pristine condition, we can finally start the camo grind. Step one is going to be accessing the Koshi complex from Almazra. Always enter the Koshi complex from underneath the Tarok bridge. There's a gas station right outside. Make sure you loot it to try and find a set of jumper cables and a car battery. You'll need this inside the Koshi complex. If for whatever reason you don't find them in this gas station outside of the Tarok bridge, you can loot any other gas station around the map until you have them. The Koshi complex is a maze and there is a lot to it and you don't get any navigational tools. So on screen, you're gonna see a giant map layout of the Koshi complex. You'll spawn in the barracks and this is where you're gonna start looking for your first few parts that you need for the Serpentine Camel Grind. On screen, you're going to see a list of every single part you need to barter in order from start to serpentine. The first thing you're gonna be looking for is three AQ laptops and a chlorine. Chlorine will spawn in any wooden crate on Koshi Complex. The AQ laptops will spawn anywhere across the map, on desks, on benches, on barrels. They'll spawn in tons of places and they will always be visible. So you don't need to open any stashes, crates or anything. They will always just be left out in the open. Once you're in the barracks, you can start searching for these while you work your way through the underwater maze. This underwater area is super easy to navigate. You'll only have it be difficult your first time. This is where that scuba mask is gonna come in handy so you don't have to panic about losing air and dying. There's two areas underwater and in between them, there's going to be a bunch of laser traps that will kill you if you set them off. So make sure you're laying down under the lasers and you defuse them so you don't kill yourself. If you don't have a self-revive, you will unfortunately die and lose all of your progress. 
Once you make it to the giant doors of the chemical plant, you can open them. Inside, it's going to be pitch black, so you're going to try to hopefully find some night vision goggles early on. If not, you can stumble through the dark until you come across some enemy bots, which when you kill them, will drop a night vision goggle. Once you can finally see, make your way to the center of the chemical plant. There's going to be two rooms you can enter. Inside these rooms, on the benches, there's going to be a radiation detector. Pick this up, it'll replace your tactical slot. Don't worry about losing whatever tactical you have, because you will need this. Also, in the center of the chemical plant, there's going to be a few vents that you can crawl through. In these vents, you'll find the factory admin key. Once you have both items, you're going to want to navigate to the alpha cluster. The doors will need power to start. This is where that battery and jumper cable is going to come in handy to power the doors. If for some reason you forgot to bring a battery and jumper cables with you, in the information extraction, there will spawn one of each. They spawn in random locations and can sometimes be hard to find. So that's why bringing a jumper cable and car battery in with you is preferred. Once you've powered the Alpha Cluster doors, you can open them and enter the Alpha Cluster. On your way to the main Alpha Cluster, there's going to be two hallways you can navigate through. There will be tons of doors you can go in and loot in these tiny little rooms. This is where you're going to be looking for those wooden chests with the chlorine chemical and AQ laptops spawning on top of desks or benches. In every single point of interest inside Koshi Complex, whether that's factory, information extraction, the defense research division, or external ops, and even barracks, these little rooms are where your AQ laptops are going to spawn in the highest frequency. Don't worry about chlorine, they're an extremely common item that spawns in wooden chests. Once you finally enter the Alpha Cluster, you're going to make your way to the balcony with enemy players and the two sentry guns. Kill all the enemies and destroy the sentry guns, and make your way to this door. There's going to be a keypad to the right of it, and this is where you're going to use your radiation detector. You're going to look at the symbols above the keypad. You're going to keep these in mind, because around the alpha cluster, there's going to be chalkboards that you will shine your radiation detector on and find the symbol and a matching number. The passcode is the reciprocal number of the symbols moving left to right. The best thing about this little puzzle is you only need to find two of the numbers because then you can just brute force the rest of the code until you eventually unlock the vault door. Inside the vault is going to be the diamond bit drill. Stow this in your backpack and at this point you should hopefully have your chlorine, three AQ laptops, and your diamond bit drill. Once you have all of your items, which is the three AQ laptops, chlorine, and diamond bit drill, you can make your way to the factory. This is where that factory admin key is going to come in handy. It will unlock the door and you can enter into the factory. Once you're in the factory, you can go straight to the buy station and barter for your ancient gun oil. Now you're going to safely exfil the map, but make sure before you exfil, you have your secure bag equipped with your larger backpack stowed and your ancient gun oil stowed. You do not want to accidentally leave anything behind or exfil without your secure bag equipped. As I said earlier, it's a mistake that you're likely to make without even thinking about it, but you'll only make the mistake once. But it's better to not make that mistake at all. Now that that step one is done, we're going to the Ashika Island map. Before we load up the map, make sure that you have a full pristine skeleton key and hopefully, if you have it, a castle key. If not, don't worry, it's just an extra step in game that you'll have to do. We're going straight to the castle right away. If you do have a Suki castle key, you're going to enter from the underwater pathways. This will make it so when you unlock the castle door and enter it and start clearing it out, enemy players can't enter unless they enter through the same access point that you did. If you don't have a Suki castle key, there's going to be a Wilson driving around the courtyard. You're going to have to destroy the Wilson and hack it until you get security clearance. Once you have security clearance, you can then enter the Suki castle through any entrance that you choose. Once in the castle, you're going to try and clear out all the bots. Make sure you're watching out for traps because this is the bomb makers area. There's going to be tons of claymores, bouncing beddies, and tripwire mines. Once you clear the castle and make your way to the top floor, you're going to kill all the bots up here and you're going to kill the bomb maker. The bomb maker is going to drop the bomb maker screwdriver. You're going to stow this for later. When you do kill the bomb maker, he is going to drop the weapons case. I forgot to mention, don't pick this up because if you do, any enemy player that's left on Ashika Island will know your exact location and it puts a target on your back, which increases your chances of dying. So leave the weapon case where it is. 
Now, all you need is a GPU and $200,000 cash. The good thing about the GPUs is, you brought in a full pristine skeleton key. Inside the castle, there's going to be three locked weapon lockers. Each locker has a 33.34% chance of having a GPU inside. The good thing? You have three skeleton key uses for three lockers, so you have a pretty good chance of finding a GPU. I was so lucky and had a GPU inside of each and every locker. If for some reason you can't find a GPU in any of the lockers, you can barter for it, which is going to require two gold bars and five thumb drives. You can find thumb drives in any office building inside of computers, and you can find gold bars inside of any rare chests. There is a sunken treasure chest on the map that will guarantee two gold bars spawned, which means that you can either use a use of a skeleton key or you can find the actual key to unlock this chest underwater and it will have two gold bars. You can now craft your GPU if you weren't lucky enough to have one in those weapon lockers. And now you have all the items that you need to barter on a Sheikah. Make sure you have your $200,000, your GPU, bomb maker, screwdriver, and ancient gun oil from the Koshi complex. Make your way to any buy station, and you can then barter for the bomb maker's blend. It's time to safely extract. Make sure your scavenger bag is equipped and you stow your bomb maker's blend and your larger backpack. That's step two of the camel grind. Now we're off to Vondel for step three. To barter for the next item, you are going to need your bomb maker's blend from Ashika Island, two vintage wines, the bullfrog's blowtorch, and two calling cards. And just a warning for everyone on this step right now. This is the most tedious and hardest step of the entire camel grind because there's lots of RNG involved. The two vintage wines spawn around the map in fridges and out in the open, but they are very rare. I'm gonna have a map of Vondel on screen, and in the highlighted areas, these are where most of the fridges are going to spawn. You're gonna loot the fridges until you find two vintage wines. Also, make sure if you have an extra skeleton key or two, you can use this to unlock stadium. Inside the stadium restricted zone, there is tons of fridges. The second RNG item is going to be two calling cards. This is where it becomes really difficult. You need the scavenger to spawn, and while he can spawn on every map in the game, you should do this on Vondel because you can get your other items in the meantime. What spawns the scavenger? Well, there has to be enough enemy player high tier loot. High tier loot consists of rare items, lots of cash, and insured weapons. So, how do we get this enemy loot on the ground to spawn the scavenger? You have to kill them which means that you're going to put yourself at risk killing enemy teams. Of course, you can use UAV towers and advanced UAVs to hunt down enemy players, or you can pick up hunt squad contracts to hunt that squad down. Remember, this is going to be extremely risky because when fighting enemy players, there's a chance that they can kill you as well. So you can always take the passive route and just hide somewhere around the map until the scavenger spawns, but that can be pretty tedious as well. So you gotta pick your poison. Once the scavenger spawns, you can tell it's the scavenger because on your map, you will see what looks like a portable buy station. This is where the scavenger spawns. Once you notice the scavenger spawn, give it a couple seconds, maybe even a minute before you go over there, which will give time for the scavenger to loot those enemy player dead bodies. Once you kill the scavenger, you're going to try and find the backpacks that the scavenger has looted. Normally, when you kill an enemy player, you'll notice they have a dog tag but the dog tag will have been stolen by the scavenger and in place is going to be a calling card. The more players the scavenger loots, the higher chance that more calling cards are going to be there. So if you kill one enemy that's a solo, odds are you're not gonna have the scavenger spawn and if he does, you're only gonna get one calling card. So here's where the high risk, high reward comes in. The bigger teams you kill, the more calling cards you get. Now, all you need is the bullfrog's blowtorch. The bullfrog is going to spawn in and drive around the map. The best way to destroy the bullfrog is to jump from a higher elevation and land on the hood. You're just going to shoot the hood until the vehicle is destroyed. Make sure that once the hood is on fire and the vehicle stops moving, you jump off it because the vehicle is going to explode. And if you don't have the right perks or the right amount of health and don't have a self revive, you can completely die out here. So just make sure you're being careful. And once the bullfrog is destroyed, 
you're going to pick up the blowtorch. Just like the bomb maker on Ashika, the bullfrog is going to drop a weapons case. Don't pick this up because every player on the map will know exactly where you are. All you're going to want to loot from the bullfrog is the bullfrog's blowtorch. And now you should have your items, which is the bomb maker's blend from Ashika, the two vintage wines, the bullfrog's blowtorch, and the two calling cards. You can now go to any buy station across the map and you just have to barter for the premium liquor. Once you have the premium liquor, safely exfil. Make sure you're exfilling with your secure bag equipped and you have your larger bag stowed and your premium liquor stowed. And that is step three of the camo grind. For the next step, we're back to Al Masra and the Koshi complex. You're gonna need three different types of vests alongside your premium liquor. Those vests are the medic vest, the comms vest, and the stealth vest. You can barter or loot for these vests at any time during your camel grind run. You can get a medic vest from killing the chemist on Al Masra. You can trade for any of the vests in the Koshi complex for honestly a really easy barter fee. Anyway, we're going to go to the Koshi complex. Once again, make sure you're entering at the Tarok bridge with a jumper cable and car battery. You're going to spawn in the barracks again, but this time, once we make our way through the first water section, just before we go and disable the trip mines, there's going to be a paper on the wall right here. This is going to be the shopkeeper's item list. You're going to have to find all of these items for later on, so make sure you have that larger backpack to stow them when you find them. You can find any of the shopkeeper's items throughout the map. However, if you're looking for electronic components, the alpha cluster is going to have a higher spawn rate, and that's where all the tapes will spawn. Everything else, office-wise, whether that's a journal or some sort of paper item, that can be found in the second floor of the factory in the offices, in the information extraction offices, or in external ops offices. Make sure you're on the lookout for those items as we go through the next few steps. Once again, make your way into the chemical plant and grab the factory admin key and the radiation detector. You're going to have to do the diamond drill bit step once again because you will need that to actually drill a safe later on. Find each symbol's respective number on the chalkboards and open up the locked room, grab the diamond drill bit, and save it for later. That's pretty much all we have to do in the alpha cluster for now. Then head to the factory. We're going to clear out the factory of all the bots in it and set up for a boss fight. You're going to want to buy as much armor and ammo as possible from the buy station. At this point, if you have found all the shopkeeper's items, you can give them to the shopkeeper to open up the secure buy, which we will need later on to trade in our three vests and our premium liquor. Then in the factory, you're going to make your way through a little maze until you reach this big open room. This is going to be a mini boss fight where you're going to fight the rhino. The rhino has a riot shield on its back. He runs really fast and has a lot of health and he does have a 50 GS as well, which will smoke you from time to time. You're going to go down quite a bit. So have your friends revive you, bring yourself revives and bring lots of ammo because tons of bots will spawn trying to distract you from the rhino. Once the rhino has been killed, you can make your way up the stairs and you will have to fight the second mini boss, which is the sniper. Once again, kill all the bots. There's going to be tons of tripwire traps here. So you're going to have to crawl through most of this section while the sniper shoots at you. Shoot back at the sniper to disable him and make him move to the next section. Disable all the traps. And once you kill the sniper, you will make your way to the safe. Use the diamond bit drill to drill the safe open. It does take a little bit of time and bots will spawn trying to stop you from drilling the safe. Eventually, once it's open, you'll be able to grab the three vests that spawn in there, which is the medic, comms, and stealth vest, which you need to trade. Now you can barter for the black cell hand cream at the secure buy station. This is why you have to complete the shopkeeper's list is because you can't barter for it at the normal buy station. Once you have the black cell hand cream, once again, we're going to safely exfil with our secure bag equipped so we don't lose any items. We're going to stow our black cell hand cream and our larger backpack, and we're going to move on to the final step of bartering for the serpentine camo. For our final game, we are going to load up into Almazra one last time. To barter for the camo, you are going to need the black cell hand cream, heavy chopper fuel, a pristine skeleton key, and the chemist's acid. To get the chem acid, you have to kill the chemist, which spawns in the radiation zone. This is where that O2 mask is going to come in handy because it also stops radiation. You're going to kill all the bots until you find the chemist, and once you kill the chemist, he is going to drop the chem acid. 
you can grab the acid and get out of there as fast as possible. If for some reason you don't have a gas mask, all the bots that you kill inside the radiation zone will drop gas masks for you. There is a lot of bots and it does get very hectic, so try to get in and out as fast as possible. Now that we have the acid, we can focus on the heavy chopper fuel. There are five spawn locations throughout the map. It's best to have a vehicle to get from place to place as fast as possible. The spawns are as follows. The airport hangar beside this jet plane. In the port, in the submarine building along the wall. In the cave complex by this group of barrels and crates. In Rohan oil in one of these two cargo trucks. And on the train inside one of the train cars. Multiple heavy chopper fuels will spawn each game, however not at all locations, but you do only need one. And the last thing you need is your skeleton key. Now that you have all four items, your pristine skeleton key, black cell hand cream, your heavy chopper fuel, and your chemist acid, you can now barter for the serpentine camo. But there's a catch. You have to wait until the secure buy station underneath the observatory is covered in the radiation. That means you have to wait through an entire game of Almazra just to get the camo. I had all four items going into my final game of Almazra to get the camo. So what I did at the beginning of the game, instead of killing the chemist and getting the few items that some people might need still, I set up a plan of attack. We planned out how we were going to enter the secure buy station, get the camo, and safely exfil without dying. We set up an LTV at one of the underground entrances, that way, when all the bonds spawn by the secure buy station at the end of the game, and if there's any players camping it, we could get in there as safe as possible. This is where an advanced UAV is also going to come in handy because you can pop it and figure out if there's players camping the secure buy station or not. In the meantime, we grabbed the helicopter and went all the way north of Tarok and just sat on the sand dunes. We sat in the passenger seat that way, none of the gas was burned up in the chopper, and the helicopter wouldn't show up on the minimap because we would be considered inside the vehicle, so you stay as hidden as possible. We waited around until the radiation started spreading, and so we made our way back to observatory. We hopped in the LTV and made our way to the secure buy station. This is where you're going to want radiation blockers, that O2 mask, and a few extra gas masks just in case. The radiation blockers will make it so you don't take radiation damage even without a gas mask, and the gas masks, of course, will take damage instead of you. Once the buy station is finally covered in radiation, you are able to access it. And at the very top, you will see the serpentine camo. And as long as you have all four items of the black cell hand cream, the chopper fuel, chem acid, and the skeleton key, you can then unlock the camo. And the second you barter for the camo, you have it permanently unlocked for you and you alone. That means you do not need to exfil. However, if you are helping your friends in the future unlock the camo, or you just want to have really good items for future runs of DMZ, you should try to exfil as well, which is where our escape plan came in handy, where we took the same LTV and made it to the final exfil site. That's the entire camel grind, from start to finish, how to get Serpentine. It was a difficult, tedious, and long grind to get the Serpentine camo, but it was really fun to unlock. The camo itself isn't the most flashy thing out there. It reminds me of Obsidian if it was downgraded a little bit. I would say unlocking the Serpentine camo is actually worth it. The journey is more enjoyable than the destination with this grind. I'm not a huge fan of DMZ. This is the only grind I've ever completed in DMZ. Other than that, I've probably put two hours into this game mode during the entire Modern Warfare 2 life cycle. Having this change of pace after grinding multiplayer and Warzone all year was so nice and refreshing. And I get to say, hey, here's a camo that not a lot of people will unlock. I guarantee right now the Serpentine camo is more rare than the Orion camo. And in my opinion, for the foreseeable future, will remain more rare than Orion. Even if you don't unlock the camo because you end up failing or you end up getting bored of the grind and stopping, this is definitely worth at least giving a try, even for the most casual player. I wish I could think of a way to describe and explain to you guys how much fun I had with this grind. We ended up failing it twice on my camel run and we had to reset two times but even after resetting the camel grind from scratch it was still just as fun doing it the second and third time 
as it was the first. I played a lot of Call of Duty Zombies back in Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4 and did Easter eggs on every single map that came out multiple times with all my friends. And this definitely reminds me of completing an Easter egg because a lot of the steps are very similar to what a zombies Easter egg is. There's a lot of fetch quests, there's a few boss fights thrown in there, all while being difficult in an oddly enjoyable way. Even though the reward itself isn't something to write home about, it still does look somewhat decent. And it is a better reward for doing the Grand Mastery grind. So if you had to choose between doing the Weapon Grand Mastery grind for months straight just to get a calling card, or this, which takes honestly, realistically, maybe 10 to 12 hours from start to finish, including the pre-grinds that you have to complete, this reward is definitely way better. As I already said, the journey is way better than the destination with this grind. It was a lot of fun to complete. I hope this guide was useful and helps you guys throughout your own grind. Best of luck, and if there is one, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.